Hello, welcome to my video. Here we are going to be learning about the different types of blood spatter. So for a quick little warning, we're obviously going to be seeing images of blood. Um, and also take in mind, I'm not the best at this. I'm learning about this still, but I do have a general understanding and I thought, you know what? I might as well just show you guys my, what I know. So, first off, we have what blood spatter is. So, blood spatter refers to the patterns that blood makes when it exits the body and lands on a surface, often as a result of force. These patterns can reveal important details about a crime, such as the type of weapon used, the number of blows, the position of people involved, and the direction and speed of the impact. Investigators use this information to figure out what happened at a crime scene. So here's some pictures of blood. <laughs> so the first type of blood spatter we have are passive drops. So passive drops are the simplest form of blood stains and they're created when blood drips downwards due to gravity. <laughs> Sorry. These tend to be round, as you can see here, and they fall straight down, but may appear elongated if they fall at an angle or at a different speed. For example, if somebody's walking this way really fast, instead of it landing round like this, it may appear more like this you know so this happens when a person with a wound is standing sitting or walking slowly and the blood drips from the injury the distance it falls also affects its size so the closer to the ground the blood drips from it'll be a smaller impact but if it falls from a higher height the impact will be a much bigger more spread out drop an example of where you would find this is a trail of round drops on the floor leading away from a stabbing victim possibly indicating the direction they walked after being injured the next one we have is arterial spreading one of my favorites it's also known as arterial gushing I don't really like that one though <laughs> so this pattern is found when blood is exiting an artery. The stains appear large and curved with a pulsing rhythm. The sort of pulsing reflects the heart rate of the person at the time. Because it is linked to a major artery, there's a lot of blood flow there. So there's a lot of pressure from the heartbeat. This occurs when a major artery, such as the croated artery in the neck or femoral, is severed. The blood pressure causes blood to spurt several feet from the source, sort of in like a boom, 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 instead of a just flowing state. An example would be repeated wave-like arcs of blood across a wall or floor near the site of a deep stab to the neck. Next, we have transfer stains. Transfer stains occur when a bloody object makes direct contact with another surface, leaving behind a recognizable impression or smear. These stains can reveal details like the shape or texture of the object, making them highly valuable for scene reconstruction. An example of this would be a bloody shoe print on a carpet or a distinct handprint on a doorknob where somebody tried to open it with blood-covered hands. These are typically created when a person touches a wall with bloody hands or a weapon is laid on a surface after use, they often appear as clear handprints or fingerprints resembling the object. See so right here we have an example of it. If you have blood on the bottom of your shoe and step on a floor, that blood is going to transfer to the floor and leaving a mark, which we can actually use to figure out what shoes they were wearing when the scene happened. Next we have wipe patterns. White patterns appear when objects move through an existing wet blood stain. 
This gives it a smear effect, as you can see here. Unlike transfer stains, though, wipes distort a pre-existing stain instead of creating a new impression. So, there was already a puddle of blood here, and it made smear marks instead of placing the blood stains there. These often occur during an attempt to clean up blood or when someone brushes against it. White patterns show the direction of movement through the way stains taper off. An example would be a smeared section of blood on a tile floor where a cloth was dragged in an effort to clean up after an assault. So, this is what it looks like. And then we have swipe patterns. Swipes are similar to wipes, but the difference lies in the source. A swipe happens when a blood-covered object comes in contact with a clean surface and moves along it. Unlike wipes, swipes originate from a bloody source. These often occur when a person with blood on their hands or clothes brushes against a wall, piece of furniture, or another surface. An example would be a streak of blood running down a wall where a victim slid their hand while trying to steady themselves. So, to go more into detail, a wipe is when there is pre-existing blood there. So, like, on the floor, example. If somebody were to have blood on the floor and put their hand in it, it would smear around already altering an existing puddle but for swipe the blood is already on their hands and when they touch a wall or something it leaves a smear pattern on the wall instead of it already being there the next type of spatter we have is impact spatter Impact spatter is a result of blood subjected with force greater than gravity, causing it to break up into smaller droplets and travel through the air before hitting a surface. The size of the droplets depend on the type of force. Gunshots tend to create a fine mist, while blunt force trauma produce larger drops. This would be an example of a gunshot. These are often created by events like gunshots, beatings or stabbings. The energy of the force determines the distribution and shape of the pattern. An example would be a fine mist of blood on a wall near a shooting victim or medium-sized spatters on the ceiling from a brutal beating. So like I said, these are an example of a gunshot because once the bullet exits the wound, the force from the bullet disperses the blood in an outward pattern. Next one, my second favorite is cast off patterns. Cast off patterns form when blood is flung from a weapon or object swung or moved rapidly. They often appear as lines or arcs that reflect the movement of a weapon. Counting the arcs can sometimes indicate the minimum number of swings. This happens when a weapon like a baseball bat, crowbar, or hammer becomes bloodied and is swung repeatedly during an assault. An example would be several curved lines of blood on a ceiling or wall radiating outwards from the attacker's position during a beating. So we can see here, this came from a knife, I believe. So what happens is they swing the knife and the force of the swing causes any excess blood on the knife to be launched outwards following the swing of the knife as you can see here this knife was swung upwards and sort of curved to the right which would mean the blood flings off leaving this sort of arc right here it's very cool the next one is expirated spatter try saying that five times fast <laughs> Expirated blood stains are created when blood is forced out of the nose, mouth, or lungs due to breathing or coughing. These stains often contain air bubbles and they may also include mucus or saliva. Because they include mucus or saliva, these are very good for getting DNA. Obviously, blood's already a very good DNA source, but these 
include you know saliva and mucus which is more dna typically occurs when someone suffers an internal injury to the chest lungs or airway blood mixes with the air during exhalation which is why it sort of comes out when you cough it also leaves a mist sort of spatter because like the impact spatters it comes out at a high force spreading it out an example is a mist of blood with tiny air bubbles on the floor near a victim who coughed after being punched in the face or suffering a lung wound the next one and last is void patterns this one's pretty easy a void pattern is a clean area within a blood stain where an object blocked the blood from reaching the surface these patterns can reveal the position of people or objects at the time of the event as we can see here there is a void pattern left by scissors that means that there were scissors when this blood spatter happened which the scissors blocked the blood from reaching the floor leaving an outline this forms when someone or something was standing between the blood source and the target surface then moved after the blood was deposited an example would be a gun shaped clean outline on a wall surrounded by blood spatter suggesting the weapon was there when the blood was projected pretty similar to the void pattern created by the scissors this one is pretty easy to understand a good example would be there's a wall and somebody standing right in front of the wall if you for example threw a bucket of paint at them it would put paint all around them but after they move there would be a clean area where there is no paint because the paint hit them instead of the wall pretty easy and that is a very quick and rough introduction to blood spatter i would like to thank you guys for watching and that's about all i have to say but yeah, like I said, keep in mind, I'm not anywhere near a professional. So some of the things I said may be wrong or I didn't really explain it correctly. And I apologize for that. So you should still have a very basic understanding of the blood spatter. Anyways, thank you again. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys later. Bye bye.